Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sabrina Rondo. I'm a PhD candidate in Nitro Rains Lab at the University of Belf, where I study the impact of pesticide residues in soil for ground nesting bees. And this afternoon, I will uh, present the results of one uh, chapter of my PhD thesis that looked at the solitary effects of pesticides used on squash crops for the Ori squash bee. So we, we already got a very good introduction of the potential impact of pesticide on bees. So I'm going to jump directly um, to the heart of the matter here and say that yes, uh, since they are important pollinators of crops, bees are commonly exposed to pesticides while they are foraging and nesting in agricultural environments. And many of these pesticides can harm bees in various ways, not just um, the honeybees, not just bumblebees, but um, wild bees as well. So now every, um, every bee scientist probably heard about that one group of insecticides, the neonicotinoids, um, that has been linked to negative effects on bees over and over. And at the risk of being um, repetitive, so neonicotinoids, they act upon the central nervous systems of insect as agonists of the, of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. And they can have uh, multiple negative effects on bees, such as an increased uh, mortality, altered foraging behaviors, impaired learning and memory, etc. And in the last years, um, the evidence of these negative effects of neonicotinoids for bees have started to pile up. Uh, and the use of neonicotinoids has become, to, uh, has become more restricted. And as a consequence, well, manufacturers have developed um, pesticides that are considered safer for bees. And um, this should be good news, but only if they really are safer. Um, for bees. So one of these new uh, insecticide is Flupyrodifrom. It's a butanolid insecticide that worked in uh, that works in a similar way to neonicotinoids. And like neonicotinoids, Flupyrodifrom is uh, systemic, which means that once it is taken up by the roots or the leaves of a plant, it is translocated to all parts of that plant, including pollen and nectar. Um, and flupyrodifrone is effective against sucking pests uh, and can be used on many crops such as citrus, cotton, soybeans, and cucurbits. It has been assessed to have low toxicity for honeybees using current risk assessment uh, procedures, but um, since these risk assessment, uh, we already talked about it, but they, they rely on a single species of the honeybee, uh, well, they, they do not consider the different, uh, the different potential routes of exposure specific to wild bees. And this is a problem because the vast majority of bee species nest underground and um, could be exposed to flupyrodifrom residues in soil when nesting on farmlands. Another potential problem is um, if the bees are co-exposed to flupyrodifrom in um, other pesticides, which may also lead to detrimental synergistic effects that we uh, may not currently be aware of. Recently, uh, the Ori squash bee has been suggested as a good model um, species to study the effects of pesticide on ground nesting bees. It's a solitary uh, ground nesting bee that specializes on plant of the genus Cucurbita, so squash and zucchinis. Uh, and the, the bees um, spend most of their life cycle developing underground. In Ontario, the adults emerge in June and July and remain active only for a few weeks, uh, coinciding with bloom in cucurbita crops. And during that time, the adult female squash bee will build individual nests by excavating vertical tunnels in the ground and she will provision each nest cell with cucurbita pollen, on top of which she will lay an egg. And this egg will hatch a few days later, feed on pollen provision and develop uh, underground until the following summer. And so you can see how um, this species is continuously exposed to uh, soil, uh, which could make pesticide residues in soil an important threat uh, to their health and survival. So the objective of our study was to assess the possible effects of a realistic exposure to two pesticides used on squash crops, the insecticide Seventoprime, which um, active ingredient is Lupyrodifrom, and the fungicide Quadristop, which active ingredients are azoxystrobin and diphenylphenazole. So alone or in combination on the Ori squash bee. So in cucurbit um, production, Sevento is used to protect crops against aphids and whiteflies. It can be sprayed on uh, or applied directly to soil through irrigation water, and it is persistent in soil, which makes its use particularly concerning for ground nesting bees. 
On the other end, quadrostop is used to protect cucurbit crops against common fungal diseases, such as powdery mildew and anthracnose. So during the summer of 2020, we performed a semi-field uh, experiment using 10 hoop houses that were set up at our, uh, our research site in Lakefield, Ontario. Um, and we divided each of the hoop houses in two with a wall made of plastic sheet in order to obtain 20 experimental units. The hoop houses were covered with bee-proof mesh and had no floor, which allowed us to plant uh, acorn squash directly into the ground in Lake May. And here I want to take a moment and uh, mention that this study system was first developed by uh, my colleague Sue uh, Willis-Chan, uh, and you may have come across her paper uh, that was recently published in Scientific Reports that linked soil application of imidacloprid to declines in um, squash bee populations. So Sue is the one uh, who laid the foundation of, uh, for this research, I wanted to, uh, to acknowledge that. So we had four treatments. Uh, a non-treated squash crop or uh, squash crops that were treated with either the fungicide quadristop, the insecticide Sevento Prime, or a combination of the two. And we used this split plot uh, design in which the insecticide treatment was applied to the full hoop house, while the fungicide treatment was applied to the subplots or for, uh, to each off, if you prefer. And we had five experimental um, units per treatment. The insecticide was applied at a maximum application rate according um, at the maximum application rate according to label using plastic uh, using plastic bottles with a hole in the lid uh, that mimicked a drip irrigation system and this was done on July 30th one week before the introduction of the squash bees. The fungicide uh, was also sprayed at the maximum rate according to label three times during the season at seven day intervals starting the day the bees were introduced in the hoop houses. And this was done um, very early in the morning to make sure that the bees were not foraging during application. On August 7th, we introduced in each experimental unit um, five mated female squash bees that we collected the day before on a pumpkin farm in Guelph. We identified the bees by marking them with a dot of paint of different colors on their thorax, and then the bees spend the night in, uh, in individual tubes in a fridge before being released in the hoop houses in the following morning. We then started collecting data on the nesting, foraging, and motor activity of the squash bees, as well as on their survival and potential impact on crop yields. And these data were collected over a period of three weeks. And then uh, last summer, well, in, in 2021, um, we assessed the reproductive output of the bees by catching the newly emerged bees, so the offspring with um, emergence traps. And we collected data on their numbers, uh, date of emergence, sex, and body mass. And all of these um, data were analyzed with generalized linear mixed models. So for, um, for today, since I only have 12 minutes, I will uh, only present the results for the uh, endpoints assessed in 2020, for which we found an effect of the treatment on squash bees. And these are pollen collection and motor activity. So for uh, the foraging behavior, what we did uh, more precisely is that we measured the number of pollen grains left on the entera of individual uh, male flowers after a single bee visit. So the night before data collection, we bagged two individual male flowers for experiment experimental unit. Um, and in the following morning, the bags were removed and we let a single bee enter the flowers. Then we recorded the time the bee spent collecting pollen. And once she was done, we removed the enter and placed it in a tube with ethanol and then back to the lab. Uh, we counted the number of unharvested pollen grains for, uh, on each enter. And we did this um, four times in total. And we found that squash bees um, exposed to the fungicides collected less pollen per single flower visit. So um, there were more pollen grains left on our vested on individual enters. And that's what uh, you can see on this graph. So the fungicide treatment is represented on the x-axis, while the colors um, represent the insecticide treatment. And a potential explanation for this behavioral response is that the fungicide could act as a repellent for squash bees. This is not necessarily a bad thing in that um, this deterrent effect of the fungicide may actually protect the bees by decreasing the amount of contaminated pollen with which uh, they feed their young. 
But on the other end, um, if the only pollen that is available has been sprayed with fungicides, then a reduction of pollen collection means less food to feed the young, which could lead to a reduction uh, in offspring uh, production. We also found an effect of the treatment on bees' motor activity. So we assessed the motor activity of the bees um, two weeks after their introduction in the hoop houses. And to do that, we caught all the bees that we were able to find in each experimental unit during two consecutive mornings. Um, the bees were placed individually in tubes that were marked with uh, lines and their activity was immediately recorded for two minutes. So then um, each video was coded and we counted the number of times uh, each bee crossed a line, so the number of line crossings. And so for the motor activity, we found a significant triple interaction between the uh, insecticide treatment, the fungicide treatment, and the date of data collection. So uh, if we look at the graph here, you have on the y-axis, the main number of line crossings, each be made in two minutes. And on the x-axis, you have the fungicide treatment. And again, the colors represent the insecticide um, treatment. Uh, and you can see that the the data are separated by date. So if we come back to our triple interaction, what happened is that for day one, uh, we found no effect of either pesticide treatment on bee motor activity. But for day two, we did find that um, the bees that were exposed to both the insecticide and the fungicide in combination showed increased motor activity. So the question now is, um, why are we seeing this? And um, what does it mean biologically? So flupiridophrone, just like neonicotinoids, stimulates neurons. So it actually makes sense that uh, it can increase bees motor activity. A potential consequence of this um, hyperactivity is that it could reduce flight performance and foraging efficiency uh, by tiring the bees out faster compared to unexposed bees. But here, um, it's not the exposure to Cevento by itself that led to the increased motor activity, but rather the interaction uh, between the insecticide and the fungicides. And this could be explained by the fact that azole fungicides, such as diphenylconazole, which uh, is one of the active ingredient in Quadris, are now to inhibit the enzymes that are responsible for detoxification in bees, um, potentially amplifying the negative effects of um, flupira uh, diffrone. And as for the time effect, um, you need to know that our last fungicide application was made on August 21st. So uh, day one is actually 24 hours uh, after the fungicide application and day two is 48 hours after the fungicide, fungicide application. And it is rather common to see um, a delayed and time cumulative toxic effects uh, of insecticides for honeybees. So it, it may be what's happening here. So to summarize, we found um, two behavioral effects of pesticides used in squash crops for squash bees. First, the exposure to the fungicide quadrostop led to a reduction in pollen collection by female squash bees. And in a second time, the exposure to both Cevento and quadrostop in combination, but not individually, uh, induced an increased motor activity in bees. So our, light, uh, our um, work highlights the need for uh, more thorough pesticide risk assessments that also consider the potential solitary effects for wild bees, but not, uh, not just for the honeybees, and especially for um, these new and supposedly safer compounds that are um, suggested as alternatives for neonicotinoids. So with that, um, thank you for listening, and I'm happy to answer your question if we still have time. <laughs>